being called by God to do something. It, it's a language we often use in our church. May they be more traditionalist or, or very liberal. In United Church, for example, we don't hire minister. We're calling minister and minister feel called to certain ministries. It makes me think of the story of Moses. Moses being called by God to free his people. In the beginning of chapter 3, uh, it's it does not start that way. We know the beginning of story of Moses and how he's rescued by the Egyptian princess. Later in the story, he got into some kind of trouble and he's forced to flee Egypt. And when we find him at the beginning of chapter 3, uh, Moses has a wife, he's working for his father-in-law, he's... Some would say he settled down. It's not the life of a prince of Egypt, but it could be way much worse. So Moses is living his life. And suddenly, as it often happened in the Bible, as it often happened in our lives, ghost shows up uninvited, unexpected. And this experience is really a life-changing event for Moses because the call he received is like I said to free his people to go back in Egypt to confront Pharaoh and to challenge one of the most powerful empire of the ancient times and it's it's not something trivial I would say if Moses knows that if he say yes, everything will be different. It's not the kind of things that you show up in front of Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And then when Pharaoh say no, he said, yeah, whatever, just kidding, forget it. No, it's something more profound, deeper. Like I said, complete change of life. And we're not surprised that Moses says, well, I don't want to do it or I cannot do it and on several occasions he will trying to find all the excuse in the book he said well uh, they won't listen to me uh, I'm not good at public speaking and so on and so on and each time God you know it feels like yes I understand but you're still going <laughs> and, and God does not take no for an answer. Still reaffirm over and over Moses. And when we, this, we come back to us, um, it might not be always spectacular and, and dramatic like in the case of Moses, but I still believe that each and every one of us is called to do something in their own way, to, to be involved in this world could be different kind of ministry, could be ordained ministry, lay ministry, music ministry, uh, to be a pastoral presence, that's a ministry, to teach children, that, that's a ministry too. So there's, there's so many things. And sometimes um, we're called to do something that we did not thought about it, or that's not necessarily our first choice, or we might be tempted to ask, why me? Why me? You know, I'm not Mr. Big Shot or Mrs. So Important, so why me? And from the story of Moses, we discover that that question is almost irrelevant <laughs> for God. Because the answer is, because there's something that, be, that need to be done, so why not you? That's, that's the answer to this question of why me? So get out of the couch and get in, involved into the game that God says to us, you know, don't be a spectator, but be an actor, be an agent of change, be active. And that, sometimes it might be scary. Sometimes we can have questions, we can have doubts, we need discernment. But through the story of Moses, we have the reminder, a very powerful reminder. God saying, I will be with you every step of the way. So we're not sent to ministry and God said, goodbye. No, he said, yes, I'm asking 
to do something, it might be asking a lot. But you're not going to be alone. I'm going to be there with you. And that's a very powerful message we get from the story of the call of Moses. Once again, thank you for watching. I remain Reverend Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man. And until next week, take care of yourself and bye-bye.